here. Hi, I had a whole different pre stream before, but it was just a whole bunch of wasting time. So instead, hi, here's the future game show. It's only 30 minutes away. I have no idea what's going to happen. Let's figure it out. Also, there's a moment where I accidentally opened my Discord on, on here, and I'm not sure if I showed any weird shit. So this will make a convenient way to cut that out of the recording. I don't think it was anything weird, but... I don't know, probably don't want to show anyone's private like, conversations or anything. Yep. I think they, uh, the uh, Gorilla Show also had a Black Lives Matter thing beforehand. So good, good on all these presentations for supporting and stuff. Okay, so Ghost of Tsushima. That was pretty much all I recognize so far, at least. No, but seriously, what, what in the hell does this vague title mean? World premiere. Alright, world premiere. Starting off strong. Ooh, content appropriate for children. Nice. Work in progress. No, this looks creepy. Team McKill Media. That's a name. Firefighter shit going on. Firefighter shit going on here. Quantum error. Wow, it seems interesting enough. Well, at least I know they're gonna be announcing new stuff here. Like I wasn't even sure of that. I thought maybe this this could, this could just be a show of them discussing stuff that's already been announced, and I, I don't even know. But no, they're now they're announcing stuff, which that's what I'm here for. I say after one of the things I was uh, most excited for on a PC gaming show was a thing that was announced long ago. Hello and welcome to the Future Games Show. Oh, right. Yeah, that's right. Isn't Nolan North start, hosting right? this? I am Nolan North, and many nice. people know me as your ghost from Destiny, or perhaps Dr. Edward Richthofen from Call of Duty series, or even, you know, the Penguin from the Arkham series. Oh, my gosh. Okay, Nolan, we get it. We get it. You've done a Yeah, the pressure to go to for uh, most it. people is Nathan Drake, of especially course, since you're... Most of you know me as Nathan Drake from yeah. Uncharted, where you probably recognize that voice. I'm yeah, so happy. Okay, to okay, they were saying for last episode. Also again with, as we host this with, uh, showcase Elena's of voice upcoming actor. Okay, games. Please give it up and welcome the lovely and talented Miss Emily Rose. Hey, Nolan. Hello. I'm just Hello. curious if they're they might doing the Uncharted welcome stuff here. From my home to yours, I'm really excited about what we have in store for you today. As PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X draw near, we're going to be talking to leading I, I know game developers neat stuff to see is done what now, we really can expect from the future yeah, of games. Just, just Plus, like we have a host of exclusive okay, game sure reveals, like, uh, world that's... premieres, well, of course they, new they gameplay they demos from upwards, current so. and next-gen consoles. Uh, and some of these are so secret, even I haven't been told about them yet. Wait, they didn't tell you about them? What, they told you? No, like they really didn't tell you about them? I think people are playing favorites. Because, I mean, I have the whole I have the whole list right in front of me right there. Whatever. Send them to me. Uh, let, and let's get into the good stuff. That one's a funny guy. Okay, so the next title is from Red Thread Games. They're this little indie studio in Norway. I and maybe, maybe, maybe it's just because it's Nolan. Know like, I'm not sure if these jokes would be as funny with the Nerf Reserve, but I like Dreamfall Nolan. Fall chapters. So that makes it funny so get for ready me. for the world exclusive premiere of their new project. World premiere. Oh, hello. That's look cool. The ghosts are coming back. One, two, three, four. 
Oh, I like this music. Also, that robot had a sweater. How adorable. Okay, tell me where I can get this song, first of all. This is exactly my kind of music, yeah. Hey, I think your choice of music might be too good, because I'm paying more attention to that than the game now. Or maybe the music is the focus. Make, make. Potato chip brand potato chips. No, the jams, bring them back. My interest has evaporated now. I just noticed my Discord is still popping out of the corner there. Yeah, drag that here. And uh, you know, just try and minimize it. Nah, screw it. I guess I just gotta close it for now. I can open it later. And I just completely miss out on the name of that game because I've too busy with my own technical difficulties. Dustborn. Hey, my name is Ragnar Tornquist. I'm creative director at Red Thread Games. Ragnar Tornquist. That is an Dustborn. awesome fucking name. Holy shit, Ragnar Tornquist. Dustborn is a story-driven action yeah, adventure signature about a band of misfits like and outcasts on a ever. road trip across America. Chill, hush, or it's a game threaten. about hope, friendship, love, robots, and the power of words. So in this footage, you're watching our main character, Pax, explore a small commune in the Pacific Northwest. She's come here with her crew to recruit her sister. But it turns out her sister's not interested in joining the crew. So your job is to convince okay. her and deal with the consequences of what happens next. The hmm. spawns coming to PC and next generation consoles in I'm I'm gonna keep an eye on this one. Thanks again to Ragnar for that exclusive first look at Dustborn. Okay, what's next, Nolan? Next, we've got a hardcore first person platformer whose recent Steam demo was played over 100,000 times. Here's an exclusive look at a new cyberspace level containing new enemies and abilities from Ghost Runner. Ghost Runner? I didn't- I haven't heard of this. Hello, that looks cool. Exclusive. Oh, hello. Oh, I- I'm already in here. Oh, th this is cool. Mirror's Edge, but with swords. I'm, 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 I'm. You just need to say that. I'm in. Ability are your greatest assets in battle. Okay, I didn't know this had like a what this was, or there's a demo. I need to check this out. Ghost Runner's coming to PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC later this design is super cool, too. All right, we're flipping back in time to the 1930s now with a game that stole the show at the recent Xbox Series X showcase. Here's Tatiana Delgado to reveal more about didn't Call of Duty's Series X showcase have, like, no games? Like, I didn't watch that, but that's what I heard. Exclusive. Like, maybe this is why this stole the show. Maybe it was the only thing there. Oh, Harry. What have you done? Hello, I'm Tatiana Delgado from Out of the Blue Games, working on Call of the Sea. You might have Call seen our sea. reveal trailer during the recent Xbox Series X event, but we wanted to take the opportunity to walk you through it 
until you read more about the game. How strange that your trail ends here. Call of the Sea is a first-person adventure puzzle game set in the 1930s that takes place in the far reaches of the South Pacific. You take the role of Nora, a woman who has crossed an ocean in search of her husband's missing expedition. At Out of the Blue, we love telling stories and designing puzzles. That is why we wanted to create a game that had a strong presence of both. And also, we always approach our games with the player's emotions in mind. That being said, although Call of the Sea is a puzzle game, I would say that it is the narrative that drives the game. Mm. Therefore, puzzles serve the narrative. It's weird when I'm looking at this, and I feel like this would make a good a point. Like, when solving them. like that, it's Some just the a vibe I'm getting from this. Expedition itself. Like maybe it's just that art style from the Portrait of Nora, later. but. It looks like it'd be a good point order, to type thing. You will try to decipher what the ancient runes were for. And going back to the story, we have the I great love that. I'd, I'd like to point and click through that art style. As the voice of Nora. We adore her acting in Firewatch and her ability to create a strong presence with only her voice. It is a tale of cell discovery, an exploration not only of the island, but of the character's inner self. Although our game was inspired to an extent, by the works of H.P. Lovecraft. This is not a horror game, but an adventure game. We okay, hope to give you a vivid mystery and at the same time an emotional Did journey. Thank you for your all. time and we look forward to revealing That's more of Call of the Sea in bit. the coming months. No, okay, I might keep any route for this one. Like, no. Not the, not, not, Call not of the, the Sea is developed the most by Alvin Not exactly my type of genre, but on still Xbox might be One, me. Xbox Series X, and Windows platforms. Our next game features none other than Sherlock Holmes, but this time he's a youthful, more arrogant version of the famous detective. Here's the producer and community manager from Frogwares to tell us more about the game's setting and how they plan to create a truly open-world detective game. Hmm, that sounds interesting. Exclusive. Hi everyone, my oh, name so this is Shabay Ganesan and I'm the producer and community manager of Hogwarts. I like this way more we are an AG People Stone independent studio from Kyiv, Ukraine. You may know us for our detective games, such as the Sherlock Holmes Adventures, as well as the recent The Sinking City. Okay, so these are guys who've been making the Sherlock games. We are working on our new game, Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1. It's a story-driven investigation thriller in which you play as the young 21-year-old Sherlock before he becomes the legend that we all know. Are those John those Watson and Jim Moriarty. Sherlock was a brilliant but rebellious aspiring detective trying to... I should to read more Sherlock Holmes too. The game takes place oh, in the late 19th century on a small stories. Mediterranean island where, according to our story, Sherlock grew up before moving to England and to where he comes back, now as an outsider, to investigate the mysterious death of his mother, the death that scarred his childhood. Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 is an open-world detective game with minimum hand-holding. In this game, we are introducing the concept of global investigation gameplay that is heavily based on the feedback that we received Is this supposed to be in the same continuity as their other games? Because if so, I respect that they call it like a prequel Chapter 1. That, 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 that's neat. That not only synergize so, like with one another, with but also allow one. you to interact with the world around you. For example, you can now decide to involve random people on the streets in your investigation, ask them for directions, or question those citizens who you think match your suspect profile. And if you doubt they would even talk to some foreigner like you, you can for instance find the right disguise, say police uniform to loosen their or, tongue. Or can I just it's point my gun at them apparently? And use it at the right time, because as I mentioned, there is minimum handholding. Sherlock Holmes, game. well known for his course, skills of deduction right and also for shoot captain motherfuckers. Part of a detective's job. We are aiming to give the player the chance to miss a piece of evidence pursue their own lead, and eventually let a killer walk free. Those who played our Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments will know what I'm talking about. We are bringing Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 to PC and console sometime in 2021. Thank you so much for your time and enjoy the rest of the show. There are some fantastic games here that we cannot wait to play ourselves. You know, so it's interesting, and it is, honestly kind of make me want to see like, uh, if the other Sherlock Holmes games. Sherlock Holmes, Holmes Chapter 1 is coming good. to PC, current, and next-gen consoles in 2021. In our next part of the show, the future game show goes retro with a series future of games retro. that reimagine the arcade and console classics of some of my favorite eras, the 80s and 90s. And what better way to begin than with a bullet hell shoot 'em up created by a small team from Lebanon, including a former Pixar artist. Here's an exclusive gameplay slice of Signy. All right, let's see what you got here. 
Exclusive. Yeah, this conference is rapid fire so far. Much better. Hey, Dantex, how are ya? I'm watching games be announced. It's cool. Oh, this looks cool already. Said this was a schmuck. Nah, that's good, good. I am also good. Maybe a little tired because I woke up early for the first show. It was mad, awesome. Ah, right in. Ah, that's a good transition. Oh, that's pretty. Yep, this is certainly a shmup all right. Interesting how the camera works, or the hands, like depending on where you are on the screen. But yeah, like the further up you go, the further the camera pans upwards to show you better. That, that, that's neat. So neat. Work, works well with the 3D environments they got going on. I'm gonna be honest, that, that thing flashed orange for a second and for a second I thought are they gonna are they gonna glory kill the spaceship? Which now now I have the idea in my head of a shmup of glory kills and I want that desperately now. Like literally just about any game can be improved with glory kills. G -g how the fuck do you pronounce that? Gigny, 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 what? Gigny is coming to Windows, Gigny. Mac, and the developers hope next generation consoles. Okay, so we're keeping the arcade vibes coming with a high speed tribute to arcade racing classics like Daytona USA and a stylish Daytona. platformer that looks like a noir comic book. But first. What comic book? Wasn't that show? Is that, that game at the Gorilla Show too? Cuts the flesh, the mind will fall. Well, I'm, this seven. looks cool already. Save us all. Fulfill what others failed to do. Mornia depends on you. Oh, that is sick in both definitions of the word. Like it's disgusting and it's awesome. Oh, I want to know what this is. I have to go back through all these shows and then write down lists of games to remember because I tend to forget some of the names by the end of these. Exclusive. Hot shot racing. Oh, look at that drift. Beautiful. Drift it, draft, and boost. Escape stuff. Whoa, whoa, hello. Modus gameplay spotlight. I'm the next gen. Oh yeah, this game looked cool at the last show. So far, we've shown a small portion of the game's overall content and the ways that you'll. Yeah, I want to see more of this one. 
act in the present, and rewrite the future. Yeah, I are, like, all in real time. This is first my point. I talked about how cool this looked last show, but I already forgot about it. You see the impact of your choices instantly, and to get really creative in combat by combining skills and playing with time. Speaking of combat, we just updated our demo on Steam to include Wilhelm, the child maid. Oh, there's a demo on Steam. Coliseum, though, features a number of yeah, new I, challenges. Yeah, that's a bunch I need to check out. We're really excited to be bringing Chris Tales both to next-gen consoles and all current consoles later this year. God, I love that art style. I just like I just like looking at it. And can I keep can I just have a screenshot of that, like just on in the corner of the screen at all times? Let me prove my experiments. Yeah, yeah, I think this was uh, shown at the Gorilla Show where it had, you were like inside a comic book. Pay cash. It's none of your goddamn business what I do with it. Wait, don't tell me you're with them. Yeah, this looks interesting enough, I suppose. Maybe not my thing, but aesthetics cool. Evil corporation, this tech enslavement, that. What's next? Chemtrails? Now it's our time to be heard. Join the revolution. Yeah, alright. Mother. Where the hell did they drop me? And finally, we're delighted to announce the release date for Neon Abyss, a Neon frantic Abyss. action platformer which fuses classic visuals to an ingenious roguelike dungeon system. Its publisher, Team 17, has encapsulated the spirit of independent games for over 30 years, with titles including Worms, Overcooked, The Escapist, and a whole lot more. Some of the just realized that. I said back in the PC gaming show that they better not cock tease me with the fucking Max Payne theme they did. They played. They did. There was nothing Max Payne there. It took me until now to realize that. What is wrong with me? Okay, this one's starting to look cool too. I'm enjoying this show so much more than the last one. That's like next month. Neon Abyss will be launching on PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and Windows on July 14, 2020. Our next game has been in early access since 2018 with an yeah. almost 90% oh, very positive review. Okay, I thought this was Tony Hawk, but I think this is a session. Here's an exclusive look at the new Easy Day Academy High School level in skateboarding sim, Skater XL. Or Skater XL. It's skateboarding, it's cool, let's see it anyways. Exclusive. I, I, you could have played any three of those games and I would have been hyped. This is looking smoother. I, got, I gotta pick up Skater X on the set from sometime. Those both look cool. Hi, my name is Dane. I'm the director at Easy Day Studios, and we're working on Skate. Well, those, are, those are some Today, good Today, we're showing a first look at the Easy Day High School level. This is a new environment we've been working on for some time, and we're excited to show it off. Yeah, I will say one thing is that I was thinking, like, session looked better than Scare Excels, because I didn't think the environments of skating looked that interesting, but this looks cool. 
This level is based on something that's really key to skateboarding, which is the California school environment. This is something that's been in countless skate videos over the years, elementary yeah. schools, high yeah. schools, very common sort of area, um, type of terrain for, for skateboarding. Yeah, One thing I've learned like, in starting to build environments schools. for Skater XL is school that one, we have two, a very probably. unique game mechanic, so we had to go back to the drawing board on how the levels were designed. The pieces of the level are combinations of elements that we've designed ourselves, but also we mix in countless real-world spots. There's probably about 25 yeah, I was gonna say, spots, they have, they, um, they, some like, that are very recognizable. Oh, I wonder if that's the leap of faith. From Please real say. high schools, real elementary schools. We've got Wallenberg, we've got Clipper, we've got um, parts of Lockwood Elementary, just a lot of different places. Uh, again, these are historic pieces. If you know skating, you probably know a bunch of these spots. And uh, the interesting thing is, again, based on the, the game mechanic itself, we've actually massaged and tweaked each of these spots um, to be not just recognizable, but also really fun and, and work with the game mechanic as well. I'm out to unknown settings. That was looks fun. The unique thing about Skater XL is it really starts with the controls. The joysticks, the analog sticks on the gamepad, um, map directly to Faces the look weird so though. independent control of each of the foot. And everything is completely physics based and generated uh, in the moment. So what this leads to is, uh, you know, kind of a, a first for skateboarding games in general. Is I'm that trying to divide you know, my eyes between the by controller visual and the skateboard, and it's not. We working. didn't actually program tricks into the game. We just programmed movement, and with that movement, you're able to do all kinds of tricks. So as you build up your skill. You're also building up your ability to I will say that seems to be perform those tricks definitely in ways. like street skating focus, and not a lot of hurt. Into it. And that's or, really where never the fucking line. The Prove me wrong. Comes that you're really directly in control. You know, just like real skateboarding, there's such a depth in, in the ways that you can use that board and how you can develop your skills. It becomes a very personal thing. And uh, in the real world, that leads to all these other things that, that pop up around skateboarding, you know, the culture and the creative side and um, the community, and, and that's something very unique to skateboarding you don't see with, with other it things. So, you know, our goal has really been to capture a lot of those elements and, and bring them into the game as well. The interesting thing is I never that played the it's skate been games. Uh, a I decade wanted to, since though. the last uh, significant entrant into the skateboarding genre, and it hasn't been explored in, you know, in, in recent times when we have all these different things available to connect the community, to, to put content out, different platforms. So we're seeing a really interesting explosion of, of content, our creative community um, and modders and, and all these different things happening um, around the core of the game. So it's really exciting to see where this could lead in the future. Skater XL is coming out onto all major platforms Ooh, July 28th. Cool looking around. And that includes Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC. Thanks, Dane, and the whole team at Easy Day Studios. Our next game builds itself as Synthwave FPS. Which means it looks nice and you shoot things. It's already been a big hit on Thank Steam, and we're pleased to announce today that it's now coming to Xbox One. This is GTTOD. Get it, to the orange door. Is this another one of those rhythm ones? Exclusive. I, like I said, I remember there were like three no different one. games with the same gimmick. Or wait, no, this is like the one that's kind of Titanfall-ish with smooth like, I think. Oh yeah, this one. Yeah, this one is fucking sick. I'm turn down my, this a little. I'm still worried about it drowning out my voice. Bit because that happened with the PS5 announcement bit. Well, not announcement, more reveal. I don't know what to call it. It's whatever. Okay. Bring the mic closer to me so I can. I know my voice is picking up better. Get to the orange door is coming to Xbox One in 2020. To turn up the ceiling fan because it's getting warm in here. Demo is available right now, free to download on Steam. Okay, Nolan, come on, you're dying here. What are you talking about? I'm not that bad. No, no, I mean you're gonna be dying when you play our next game, a third-person action adventure. Get this, 
It's set within a coma where you explore your memories while fighting for your life. Okay, I'm confused. I think I need to see the trailer. All right, I mean, glad you asked. Hardly like the only game that I ever have the, that's entirely in a coma. Like, yeah, the Exclusive. Driver San Francisco. Amazing game, by the way. I should play that. In a coma! Okay, this looks cool. Disdain 2. I want to know what that means. Is, is Disdain a stat? Oh, that, that looks cool. You play as the Raincoat Killer. Yeah, this, this show is just showing off cool game after cool game. say moose but I'm not sure if that was a moose or a deer or what. Waking. Waking is Xbox coming only. to Xbox huh. and Steam on June 18th, 2020. Interesting. Who wants an exclusive premiere? Well, I'm not really asking here. Right. This is actually happening. Our next game is a sequel to the critically acclaimed World War II flying yeah, yes. bomber, bomber crew, which boldly but, goes but it's sci-fi now. Holy. This licensing team allows into a is this Bomber Crew but Star Trek? <laughs> Also, I should stream Bomber Crew sometime. That's a good game. World premiere. For too long, the Phasmids have been causing trouble in our peaceful little corner of space. But not any longer. Gina, let's go full Abrams with the flares. Enlist today to embark on an epic space adventure. Okay, yeah, and show me more, show me more. Your part. Let's get some of those cool wipey things in this part, Gina. Join us on Athena Ooh. Station. Experience the Oh man, how big can you make like the crews and stuff here? Seek out new life. And make new friends along. Also, I'm imagining more ships than one make compared to Bomber Crew where it's just the one plane. You know, and like make crash new friends along the way. Live, laugh, and prosper. And make that only get some FTL vibes, which Bomber Crew already sort of had. So it makes sense that if they send it in space, yeah, it's definitely gonna feel even more FTL y. Space Crew, yeah, that looks awesome. Space Crew is published by Curve Digital and will launch on PC, Xbox One, PS4, and Switch in late 2020. Hey, Nolan. I got a good question for you. You ready? What is scarier than clowns? Uh, nothing is scarier than clowns. Yeah. You know that. Well, Unch you wouldn't say Uncharted that if you've been to joke. Wales. You should probably cover your eyes for this. Exclusive. These are not words I wish to write. I fear you may believe me taken with madness. My father seeks to use me. He wishes me to sing for him as she did. To become the star attraction that will draw good folk to this accursed spit of land. I cannot explain further, but ask that you trust me. Your love, always, Elizabeth. Hello, my name is Ben Tester, and I'm head of marketing at Wells Interactive. Ben Tester. Now we're finishing work on a new title, Made of Scare. And we're really you sure you got the right job there, Ben? New and exclusive gameplay footage. Made of Scare is a first-person survival horror game, which features a story inspired by Welsh folklore. It fuses Ooh. psychological, gothic, and British That's horror. Neat. Set in 1898, Made of Scare is inspired by the haunting Welsh folklore. I don't know that much Welsh folklore, but that, that's a honestly kind of makes it interesting. I can learn. It's driven by torture, slavery, piracy, and a supernatural mystery that suffocates the grounds of the hotel. In this footage, we wanted to explore the 3D sound-based AI system that is the core survival mechanic. We want to show you what you can do to remain undetected, and if you're caught, what tools are available for you to survive. What the enemies the at Scare Hotel are completely blind, and they hunt by only what they can hear. So any okay. noise that you make from walking or running, bumping into environmental objects, or even breathing heavily will uh, often result in death. 
Okay, that's a so that's a cool gimmick. By creeping, avoiding the obstacles that make the noise. But if the enemies are close, then holding your breath is the only option. That's like kind of like deadly premonition a bit. Run out of breath, then even your panting will get you killed. You are not completely defenseless. There'll be a sound-based weapon available with limited ammo that's hidden yeah, that's in the grounds of the hotel. You'll have to find health items, collectibles, puzzle pieces, map pieces, and story pickups. All items that you can find and add to your inventory. The game will feature three levels of difficulty. The scares remain the same throughout, but a change in AI behavior, enemy strength, limited manual saves, and reduced ammo and health items will put more of an emphasis on that classic survival horror experience. Made of Scare is coming to PC and console, with a digital and physical launch on PS4 and Xbox One this July. You can wishlist the game now on Steam, and pre-purchase will be available in the coming weeks. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you enjoy the show. Oh, that doesn't look pleasant. Hey, Made Nolan, of Scare. Oh, now. that's how I thought that was spe spelled. All right, Made of Scare launches on PS4, Xbox, Switch, and Honestly, Windows. Honestly, not that much of a first-person horror guy, but that looks hey, interesting. Tim, what's better than looking at one upcoming game? Is this another one of your dad jokes? It's looking at a collection of upcoming games in the space of a few minutes. Okay, I'm listening. Here's an incredible lineup of future hits to get excited about. That's a bold claim to say they're all hits. Smite's already a hit. People already like that game. Oh yeah, th this one I remember looking cool. I want to see more of this one. Oh yeah, Carry On. I forget, did that come out? I've never seen that, like, Devolver. Unbound. Enough. I don't know how to say that, but it looks cool. Animutation M. I don't know. It's all gone. Dog there, though. Dog not gone. Dog there. The almost gone. Well, no, the dog isn't here, though, so it's completely gone. It's game titles, I swear. Yeah, here's that uh, one game I was showing at uh, PC Gaming, I think. I thought this one looked cool. Add it all? Environment's so cool. Champions of the. Oh, wait, 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 this is the Avalon game, right? Wave break. Not right, I guess. Boat game. Loud pop. Hello. This looks cool. Wind jammers. The classic. Hammer. Is that hammering or hammer ting? I can't tell if that sword is supposed to be a ting. A T. Kinda neat, I guess. Stage hands. Oh, I think I remember this is shown somewhere. Neat, I guess. Kinda overcooked looking in a way. Oh, arcade. You can find out more information about all those titles by heading to gamesradar.com. Our next game appeared in our sister event, the PC Gaming Show, just a few hours ago. And we're delighted to have John Pearl join us now for an exclusive look at Remnant from the Ashes DLC, subject 2923. Oh, yeah, this one. Sure. Exclusive. And now I'm already more interested. Why is it this show is showing stuff the PC gaming show already showed, but I'm more interested in it now. 
Like this music is way cooler Hello. than anything they did Pearl, there. The design director at Gunfire Games. Right now, the team is hard at work on Subject 2923, the final DLC for Remnant from the Ashes. This DLC is much larger and more expansive than any of the previous content we've released. Like this looks neat. I honestly don't really care that much when they show at the PC gaming show, but this, I, I, I could see myself liking this. This DLC will introduce a brand new campaign that takes place a year after the events of the base campaign of Remnant. Oh, although to be this fair, this guy needs to buy a better mic. Holy crap! Project and how it connects to the Roots invasion on Earth. With the footage we're showing, I really understand the circumstances are what they are, the but unforgiving heights still. of the new explorable world of Resum. The inhabitants of the world are an entirely new faction of enemies, the Uriki, which are a race of menacing humanoid rats. In combat, you'll find they are as resourceful as they are deadly. This DLC has a lot of additional content. With the addition of the new campaign comes all new quests, bosses, weapons, trinkets, armor sets, and more. Additionally, Reason will be added as an option in Adventure Mode. And if you have the Swamps of Courses DLC, it'll add Reason to the rotation of Survival Mode as well. The Subject 2923 DLC is coming to PC, Xbox One and PlayStation 4 on August 20th. And we can't wait for everyone to play it. Thank you so much for tuning in to find out what's next for Remnant from the Ashes. Hope you all enjoy the rest of the future game show. Alright. Yeah, this definitely looks better than when they showed at the, P at the PC gaming show. Don't care more. Alright, so Remnant from the Ashes, subject 2923, will launch on Xbox One, PS4, and Windows PC. And now for something completely different. What do we got here? Exclusive. Everybody loves playing board games. Now they're finally cool. But they're not so easy to play when you can't meet up with your friends or loved ones. Don't fret, my old chums. Here at Thunderbox HQ, we've been working tirelessly to create state-of-the-art AI, amazing computer graphics, a bitching synth soundtrack, and our laser-powered but totally harmless board game zapping digitizer. Also, we can bring you yeah, the retro sci-fi survival strategy we like to call The Captain is Dead. Oh, rip, Let Captain. Me just load it up for you. Oh my god, there are aliens all over the ship. Come on, open up. Wow, this looks kind of dangerous. Good! Ready! Get your goddamn dirty tentacles off of my spaceship! Biological components operating at 100%. Our simplest kind of neat. Skill assimilated. Aesthetics pretty cool. Reminds me of one of those old fashioned video games. And I'm done. Taking charge. I haven't used one of these since 3086. I'm still right. Those aliens picked the wrong ship to mess with. The captain is dead. Head on over right now to Steam right now to wish list it up right now. Alrighty. Captain is Dead is a digital board game and will launch on Steam in 2020. Okay, so our next games, they're linked by their focus on player creativity. From designing a food-themed obstacle what course for you and your friends, that? to creating a mobile base that traverses a savage land. But let's start with a title called Main Assembly. No, seriously, Hello, what the hell am I looking at? Welcome to Main Assembly, a game that gives you the freedom to create anything you can imagine. With huge open sandboxes to explore, your creations will be pushed to the breaking point. Jam-packed with loads of challenges and parts to unlock, pushing your inventions to the limit. Revolutionary freeform crafting lets you construct anything with ease and precision. Once you have perfected your design, why not take it for a test flight? Happy with how your robot looks? With the visual programming interface, you can set up controls and use sensors to make logic for different types of automation and really put your creations to work. Or I'm jump online with friends to compete and collaborate. 
Show your creations to the world and test out what others in the community mm. have built in the workshop. That would be very really good at building anything, but... Oh, you can make jet. Main is that, is that just straight up uh, access. An, like an See SU-50? That's what that has. Yeah, that's what it's called, I think. It, it was the pack fub, but, but it got changed to a SU something. Wait, yeah, just straight up fighter jets. Okay, you sold me now. Ah, and this one was shown before, I think. Hello, my name's Jamie Jackson, and I'm from Mythical Games. And today we're super excited to give you an in-depth look at our new games, Blank Coast Block Party. We're a new studio created by a bunch of veterans who helped create some of the world's biggest game franchises, including Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, Skylanders, DJ Hero, Guitar Hero, and Minecraft Story Mode. Blank Coast Block Party is a game about vinyl toys coming to life, but it's actually more than just a game. It's Apparently a also them being Jesus as they can walk on water. And collectors Nope, nope, I'm, I'm, you, you unsold me on this. Now that I've sold to begin with, but flossing. Yeah. Hate flossing. So it's a stupid looking dance. Blanco's running around the junction. The junction in Blanco's is a really cool place that is just the beginning. Uh, oh, hey, Inferno. It's going to grow over time. Um, or is, is he here or is, is he just hosting? Full of other players doing their thing. It's going to be full of gigs and dares. I don't know. NPCs are going to set forth. I suppose it's here it'll say a little. As you do these things. But thanks for hosting anyways, if you end up seeing this. Level up your Blanco, so you're going to be able to train them to do different things. So each Blanco that you own, not only do you own it, you get to train it and to be... Oh, uh, okay, so you are here. Hi, thanks for hosting. Super fast and jumping. You can make it super tough. But I've only really made affiliate a while ago, so I'm still getting used to those sound blurts. You're also going to be able to get these really... Yeah, I saw you were playing Fallout 2 earlier. How'd that go? Um, some of those things might be things that you can attach to your Blanco that just look cool. Some of them will actually enhance a lot of your abilities. But the junction is just the beginning, and it's going to grow and get bigger and bigger over time. Oh, get, 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 get the flossing away, please. I UGC don't like it. So everything here, people just built using the UGC editor. We wanted it to be super easy for players to build and create these levels. Key to it is everything can be done with a game controller. In Blanco's Block Party, you're going to be getting new content seasonally. Nice. What that means is we're going to be delivering you. I'll try to catch some more in the future. I'm just busy doing all this. For that season. So if you go and buy a Blanco in season one, that won't be available once you get to season two. So if you manage to snag one of the cool ones, you're going to be one of the few that gets to keep that for as long as you want to keep it. The same applies to any of the dares and the quests. Those are going to be locked to a season, and anything that you get from completing those things only is available in that season. Also, thank Obviously, you for showing up right now, because I have just so blanked on this game. I, yeah, I really have no interest on this particular one. And create two verifiable assets. It allows us to legitimize the type of gray markets that pop up around so many games, and it gives players the power to dictate the value of those assets. And the key thing is, is you as a player own it, and we're going to make it really easy for you to do what you want with that. Players can create the world that they want in Blanco. This one's still going? We've just provided really easy tools so that you can build whatever world you want to build and set the rules for that world. The limit really is kind of your imagination. Yeah, Blanco's that, Blanco's that general sort of tone I, I don't really care for. We'll be announcing more news around additional platforms and our beta soon. If you want to know more about it, head over, reserve your account at blankos.com, and you can and, uh, that, us on Twitter at PlayBlankos. Like, Blankos it makes me feel old, and I'm, Thank I'm you barely old. Yeah. Exclusive. Okay, what's this one? Okay, I was wondering if this was that one they showed at the PC game show where they're like sailing on the sand, but no, this looks different. What we got here? That is some cool looking lava. Rather, um, not conductive to what lava is supposed to do, but still looks cool.
Hi, my name is Lucas. I'm a producer here at Dunky Crew working on Last oh, Oasis. And today I would like to show you our Still new map. Not? Last Oasis is a nomadic survival MMO combining innovative features that nomadic. allow players to traverse the world on complex wooden machines, engage in epic battles both against the fauna and against each other, okay, this leave looks a mark on the player-driven economy, and do many more exciting things in this unique world. What we're showing here today is the next big addition to the game, a volcanic oasis. This upcoming type of a map consists of all new okay, areas this, explored, yeah, this looks from cool. golden barren fields stretching all the way to the horizon. I'm not sure it's this kind of thing I play, but that creates natural on a conceptual level, I think it looks cool. Like, does that make sense? Obliterating anything that gets near. As you travel through these vast virgin terrains, you get a chance to discover efficient ways to mine obsidian and find rare loot in mysterious man-made stone runes and even hunt legendary killings these giant winged lizards inhabiting mountains in hot climates. Hey, like, even if I don't play it, I, I admire the creativity going on. It, this is to survive, the aesthetic going on looks cool. To on this hot soil. Greenery and sources of water are hard to come by and hostile fly monsters don't make it any easier to explore because they're attracted to walker wings, making it essential for anyone who decides to venture towards these new territories to prepare in advance. Smart traders will likely take advantage of the resource scarcity to try to make some flocks on desperate nomads missing some wood or water, while explorers will be risking their lives to gather rare resources that appear in high quantities in these dangerous conditions. We are working tirelessly to bring in more content and improvements for the game, so make sure to try Last Oasis out now. Last Oasis, yeah, I don't, I don't keep that name in the back of my head. This one looks cool. It's available now too. Neato. Next up, the Future Games Show talks to industry experts about how next-gen consoles and PC technology are changing the way we play. That we hope you enjoy our special investigation into the future of gaming. And for the record, we called it that first. I, I just kind of want to see more new games, though. Oh, hi, Keanu. How are you? What's next? A new generation of gaming is upon us. With home consoles such as Sony's PlayStation 5 and Microsoft Xbox Series X set to release in late 2020. I still stand by the PS5 looking the cool. Memes be damned. We see companies like Google Stadia continuing to push the boundaries of cloud gaming technology, while studios like Epic Games are beginning to show us what a new generation of engines will be capable of delivering. The Future Game Show has caught up with some of the world's leading developers in fields including graphics, audio, storytelling, and machine learning to discover how the next generation of hardware will push video games in a way There's there's going to be a presentation involving cyberpunk in a few days, isn't there? I watch that too. Bah, the way that yeah, I, I see the game world changing in the next generation is with a bigger focus on player interaction and making the worlds feel truly alive. We can already make game worlds that are almost too big for the amount of content that we put in them. So what do you mean almost? People do that pl plenty of times. World, Some people just need to make their damn world smaller. To play around in them. That, Let's I make things more concise. The new technology that really excites me is using machine learning, both to make the game feel a lot more responsive. Ah, the future of gaming! And to augment my abilities as a game developer. The way that I see video games evolving in the next generation is with richer game interactivity. We've seen graphics fidelity just explode over the last 20 years. Games can look so good these days, it's crazy. It'd be but nice they show off some more Ghost of Tsushima. I like that game just looks really cool. Caught up. What I'm super interested in is solving problems that help game worlds and I, characters. I wonder if they'd show off any games here that they've already showed off at the Sony thing. The next generation I don't know. of tools and technology should because, allow you Like this event is hardly restricted to any console. So. Creative things you can do as a player. And to help game developers create richer, more soulful game worlds. I'm really excited about using technologies like Semantic Amount to help game characters feel more responsive and alive. To get the game to create content not just randomly, but based on the kinds of things you've done as a player so far. 
All One right. way that game worlds might feel more alive in the future is by replacing scripted interactions with organic conversations. This live demo from Russian AI project no. Live Mind literally puts Jesus. words into Geralt's mouth and could be a sign of things to come. Do you remember back in Butcher? Low poly Geralt scares yes. me. I want a great saddle for racing then. Ah. I've seen things that weren't meant to be seen. Game worlds that will evolve in the next generation. And heard them too. Stories being told within them too. Narrative is such an important component to the games we play, furthering our connection with virtual spaces. God damn, and that got me almost as much as that freaking bug snacks thing. One area developers are eager to evolve. I wrote my first. Game. I, I I swear, if that if that low poly Geralt ended up just rushing the screen, that would have been the end of me. I would have died of a heart attack on screen. So much on, on stream. But in some ways, we're still pursuing the same goal. The biggest benefit of games as a storytelling medium is the interaction, but often we still tell the stories at the players instead of truly letting them be a part of it. The future of interactive storytelling should be about how we can make the experience as frictionless as possible. Really making the player feel like they are actually part of the story. Um, oh, cool. I, actually, I, I can't play Origins now. That, now that my computer can handle it. But also with friends at home or online. I'm also hoping to see storytelling explore more collaborative efforts, telling stories to larger groups of players at once, without telling each of them that only they are the chosen one. Yes, what please. Ourselves is traversal, which is what should be at the heart of every storytelling experience in AAA. You know, can we make it more about the internal conflicts rather than those external conflicts of running, jumping, and shooting? Movies never. Welcome to Star Wars: The Old Republic, where. Assets. Well, a thousand of you are the only the one who can save the galaxy. In exact moment. And storytelling goes well beyond just the words like being said. Fight. It's the audio, and the camera shot, and effects, and the location. Now with characters and the world looking more real than ever, less downtime due to loading, and I think that's what makes me like MMOs like Star Wars larger, Galaxies, where you're not like the one hero, you're just the guy in the galaxy the doing whatever you do. That, that, that works for MMOs. A new generation of hardware means we are about to encounter a new frontier for graphical fidelity and visual effects. That's a given. But what about game audio? Sony and Microsoft are putting more emphasis than ever before on audio. And in the way that sound can draw us in game worlds like never before, could our sense of immersion in virtual spaces be about to change entirely? The next generation. Okay, but when do we get smell a vision? And expressed in a much bigger sense. Uh, we're already starting to see hints of it already. Uh, Technologies such as ambisonics and ambisonics are being rediscovered and people are starting to think in different ways of how we could even push the boundaries even further. So one of the things that's so exciting about the next gen audio is that it's promising just a whole new level of immersion. Obviously the PS5 3D audio is kind of the most outspoken example of this. And so with that new immersion, hopefully is going to come whole new levels of player engagement. This is something that, that's very special about sound and music is that it's, it really gets to, you know, it, it accesses the core of who we are. Shut your arm weird. The fact that we have 3D audio will enhance that in a much grander sense. How we play. Of course, some of the biggest changes to play you won't be able to see. From smaller teams being given the tools to more easily achieve their creative ambitions, the expansion of services such as cross-platform play and cloud gaming, to a huge reduction in load times and install sizes. Here's just some of the reasons developers are excited about the changes on the near horizon. Playing games in the next generation should feel more social than ever, with all the online services bound to get a refresh. I definitely feel like the next generation will have more opportunities to play together when we can't be together. I think the future mm. of mobile gaming is really about two things. The first is about ubiquity. The second part of mobile gaming in the future is going to be about sociability. People are going to play games in a more and more social manner. And it will be strange in the future if you find someone that's actually playing a game purely solo and never plays any game with other people. Crossplay hey, is becoming screw you more too. widely accepted and implemented. <laughs> and Allow me to retreat to my cave of loneliness, what damn it. You're getting with your friends, what version they're getting, what platform they're on. You should be able to seamlessly play together, which is amazing. Uh, almost zero load times, cross platform ownership of games, uh, cross platform cloud saves, and just overall the focus on the player's experience rather than the platform itself. The next generation of hardware should allow smaller teams to create products of a higher graphical fidelity. Is the developers will have this extraordinary opportunity to create really rich, diverse worlds 
at very, very high resolution. And we'll be able to come to rely on game engines to do so much of what we couldn't do before in terms of complex lip syncing, facial expression, complex There's something new about Watch Dog Legion. What this can do is that a level cool. of playing fields for developers. Um, and developers who previously couldn't have competed at the high end will be able to do so. It's a really exciting time. Alrighty. We'd like so. to thank everyone who gave up their time to bring us that insight into the future of gaming. All right, our next game is introduced by right, still more games. Legend. Nice. Thanks, Emily. You know, guys, I... No, seriously, no? Oh, my God. Okay, no, I refer, of course, to Brian Fargo. He's the original producer of Fallout. He's here to Ooh. tell you about the action RPG Wastelands 3. Let's take a look. I still gotta play first two Wastelands. I, I have them. I just gotta play them. Exclusive. Hello everybody, I'm Brian Fargo. I was the executive producer on the original Fallout and Wasteland series. And I'm here to tell you today that finally Wasteland 3 is coming August 28th for the Xbox, PC, and PlayStation 4. Alrighty. Who would do this? I definitely like the snowy environment. Well, when all, all the murder looks cool too, I suppose. Who would murder families and children? A video game player? Let's find the monsters who did this. I'm sorry, I needed the loots. Yeah, it just sounds to me like they're they're describing the average RPG player. I'm sorry I I set your entire family on fire, but do you, do you see do you see how much more ammo this pistol can hold? It's beautiful. Oh, so this is some nice music. Okay, the end Wasteland has just begun is honestly a pretty cool tagline. Xbox One, PS4, Windows, Mac, oh, so what, what, and Linux what did I do just there? I go to the right of the camera. Why, why, I have a lot of trouble looking straight at the camera today. Question. If clowns are a 10 on the scarometer, And what? My dying is like a 4? Yeah, we've been over this. Look, if clowns are like high, then our next game needs a new scoring system. Check out this new gameplay from Survival Horror Remothered Broken Porcelain. What the what kind of title is that? Exclusive. Rated M for mature. Please come in, Miss Reed. Come in. Good evening, Mr. Ashman. Do you remember me? The graphics look nice. Only between old friends. Oh, that looks cool. <laughs> I'm Jennifer, by the way. <laughs> Lindsay, but call me Lynn. Lynn! At last. <laughs> it's just a bad dream. Where are you? Show yourself! What the axe? What have you done to her? Again, not normally a guy for horror games, but this looks cool. Oh, we'll just bottle them right in the face. Okay, you, you got me sold. Just let me check every item not bolted down at my enemies, and I will buy your game. In fact, why limit it there? Let me unbolt the items and throw the bolts at them. No, but seriously, what the hell does remother mean?
Remothered Broken Porcelain comes to PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and Windows in late 2020. Next up, we have a world-exclusive teaser for a new title from Different Tales. No spoilers here, but if there's a full moon tonight, we all should stay inside. Werewolves. I managed to pick up that incredibly subtle hint. Clearly, I'm a fucking genius. I'm, I'm totally sure I'm the only one who picked that up. Werewolf the Apocalypse. Oh, yeah, I think I saw someone on the Two Best Friends subreddit talking about this, actually. Neato. What a trailer! It's a trailer oh, for a trailer. More from this team in the coming months. So the Future Game Show has taken a closer look at the games of tomorrow, but big changes are happening to the way we play right now. Features such as cross progression and cross play cross allow us to play. It sounds like you that time you tried to play Crash Bandicoot. As I was saying, new features like cross play let PS4 owners connect with Xbox, Switch, and PC owners in their favorite shooters. And we caught up with developers High Res about how these features work in their current and upcoming games. Crossplay lets you play games with your friends, regardless of which platform they own. And this it's grown very in much seems to be not my kind of game. Titles such as Fortnite and Call yeah, of Duty much. Warzone. Developers High Res Studios are trailblazers in this field, but the industry as a whole has been slower to embrace the potential of crossplay. We caught up with High Res to ask why, and to discover the importance of crossplay as we head into the next generation. To overcome the challenges of making crossplay work, you need to change people's mindsets. There's a fear that platforms will lose revenues and lose players to competing platforms if they open the doors to crossplay and progression. In the future, I think you'll start to see consoles and other platforms embrace a truly play anywhere experience. It will become increasingly less important what hardware you're using to access the game and much more about like connectivity and communication. Oh, well, I meant more crossplay would be nice. Cross right? hits won't be in the past, some of my uh, cross cross progression also like choices on what where I should get a game has been played. Like, okay, out where out are the most people? Should be able to play from anywhere doing anything. Where I would love very much like that, just what uh, is that, my that preferred follow you around as you a, go from uh, console to console or platform to platform. If they choose Xbox or PlayStation or Nintendo, and or for PC most part, for the PC is the most convenient for me. But the game they love, stuff, like the stuff like say fighting games, like players expect the same experience trouble. across all I don't play a lot of them, but what so ones I do, I feel like I have trouble finding people on them compared to consoles. So yeah, crossplay. Um, and nice. you also want to ensure that kind of competition across all these platforms is fair, regardless of who they're up against. Now that a console game is a PC game, is a mobile game. Uh, hey Rex. Things like See, cultural didn't miss too much though. This show is much better than the AI. Uh, are a bigger, a, bigger uh, role in gaming. PC gaming show. Much more um, so entertaining. So I think the long answer short. That's one of the kind of maybe hidden benefits of crossplay is it stimulates diversity and kind of a global approach to how you think about gaming. To deliver next gen crossplay in general, like, like this, it takes commitment. A lot cooler time. games, and they're presenting them a lot faster. Though right now you are yeah, in one more of the lulls, I suppose, or just we talking about crossplay and stuff. The single biggest is it's much easier to build a play anywhere title from the start. Also, it's it hosted by later. Nolan North and Emily Rose. More it's more entertaining by default. Uh, across all of these platforms. Well, for one, it also showed some of the stuff that was already shown at the PC gaming show, but in much more entertaining ways. Like I care more about like remnant from ashes now, and it was that one J. That, that one like RPG that I keep for, it's like Chris something that looked really cool. Oh, it also showed some Skater XL like that got a new level. So that's cool. Some cool horror games. What's up, everybody? I'm Scott Lucier. Oh yeah, uh, you know the game Bomber Crew? They're releasing a sequel to that, except it's space like Star Trek. So that looks cool. Currently, we're finishing work on Rogue Company. And we're really excited to be able I to share this no update with you. Rogue Company is. Rogue Company is a third-person shooter that features a unique blend between action-paced gameplay. Bomber Crew is a cool game. game like and imagine, play as a rogue, it's kind of like FTL, except you're in a World War II bomber. outside of the wall. And they drop in exotic locations yeah. all over. They brought this up back when Rogue it was on, Company but is going to be might play, try to stream that sometime. And it'll feature cross-play and cross-progression across all platforms. Since day one, one of our cornerstones was making sure that you were able to play the game you want, on the platform you want, with the friends that you want. At the end of the day, Rogue Company can be summarized in one word. Inclusive. Today we are in the late stages of Rogue Company development. 
which means we're testing crossplay and cross progression features, polishing weapons, rogues, and maps. I'm curious if we would actually be able to see some more Hitman here. The core combat experience in Rogue Company while also making sure like they that showed off uh, that, that, that small bit at Sony, but. I, I certainly wouldn't mind if they showed more of that Dubai level because it looked cool. I just want to see someone get thrown off that tall ass building. Rogue Company at 60 FPS as I sit on the couch and my wife is watching another episode of Love Island is a dream come true. Yeah, I've, I've, I've just been turning out this game. This Xbox does not look it's my kind of game PC, at all. And Nintendo Switch later this summer. We can't wait for you to play our labor of love. To sign up for the alpha, head on over to RogueCompany.com. Thank you, and enjoy the show. I'm trying to remember some other stuff I've forgotten that came out, but I, I keep forgetting more and more stuff as the show goes on because I'm focusing on new stuff. The future of crossplay and info about their upcoming titles. Now yeah, we all true. know the next generation consoles are getting. You, you gotta earn so that that body throw. Look at what's to come in Square Enix's third-person shooter, Outriders. I have no idea what this is, but okay. Exclusive. Next time. Nope, it just looks like all the rest. Broadcast. We'll be taking a look at the journey into the unknown, plus the characters joining your adventure as you battle through a hostile world. We'll also be showcasing a brand new area and delving deeper into our next class, the Pyromancer. Coming next month. Oh, okay. It's another trailer for a trailer, I guess. We can't wait to hear more about Outriders in the lead-up to release sometime in holiday 2020. We're heading 150 years into the future next, where humanity is struggling to survive and human brains are being transferred into robot bodies. Here's more on disintegration. Okay. Not one step further. See what we've got. Five integrated outlaws. Sir, have you got weapons and shelter in there? Maybe you could give us a chance to rest. We may have more of interest to you. That robot's voice go. sounds familiar. Hi there, my name's Marcus Leto. I'm I don't think that'll be Cyberpunk here because I was looking at like the Cyber, the, the Summer Game Fest schedule, and I think that has its own like presentation. New game called Disintegration. And we are Hang on, let me let me see if I can get the link for you. Uh, be uh, getting ready for it to launch soon. Wow, look at you. Yeah, I guess you took the hard road. No, oh, damn it. Ah, yeah, give me a moment. With disintegration, we set out to build something truly unique. Um, it blends okay. some great parts of a first-person shooter uh, with real-time uh, tactical elements in a way that's never been done before. Yeah, you and should be able to see, like, the schedule for stuff there. New gameplay mechanics in order for it to work. Like, hell, that's where I managed to even figure the out, like, this show was happening at all. Is, uh, I, I thought only the PC game shows today. Now ...in the future where humanity's really struggling to survive. And one means of survival is taking the human brain and actually implanting it within an armored shell and attaching that to a robotic armature, allowing them to survive through this period of time. Once in these robotic armatures, humans now find themselves in a world where they are super strong, they're super durable, and some of them don't want to return back to humanity again. And so a new army is developed called the Rayon. In this world, we play some of those early integrated who are fighting back and we don't want it to feels so much later than that what the hell I see what you call freedom not interested okay you know what the reason prior feels later is that i have my door closed and, and the light on which i usually do later at night five v five against one another i rarely have it like this in the middle of the day crew in this incredible battle against one another each one of those uh, those matches takes place in a different type of game mode, so there's a great variety of things to hop into. Victory. In order for the player to really have success playing Disintegration, they need to consider both parts of the equation. On one hand is your grab cycle and your weapons and yes. abilities that some just are completely used screwed up my perception and time in the middle of this show. That's just one part of the equation, though. On the other hand is your ground squad, each with their unique abilities, 
that you can fire off tactically in gameplay. It's important that the player understands that both of these things work in tandem together. I'm not saying I'm disinterested in this game, but it's not really grabbing me either. It's just sort of there. And for you to kind of consider both parts is critical for your success. Which is a shame because it seems to be showing a lot of giant robot fighting. Which normally I'd be all for. And Steam, well, for the PC, we're excited to be on. Oh, so these guys need better mics. Holy crap! We're eagerly waiting for the community to hop in and start playing with us. Um, I'm sorry. Were you two having a moment? I can leave y'all be. What? The grab cycle? I'm a pilot. Uh huh. It's called the pre-flight inspection. No judgments here, huh? Okay, seriously, that robot dude's voice sounds familiar. Where, is, where have I heard it from? Disintegration is coming to PS4, Xbox One, just three? and PC June 16th. Isn't that just three days now from now? You want me to pre-order something for three days from launch? As we explore what might have happened if the Second World War didn't end in 1945. Ooh, love me small history. Exclusive. Hi everyone, my name is Bogdan Graczyk, the game director of the upcoming narrative-driven adventure game Paradise Lost. That's what the people have in cool I'm names. I'm super excited Bogdan to walk you through Graczyk. the alternative history that serves as the setting for our story. In Paradise Lost, the Second World War doesn't end in 1945. In the spring of 1960, the Nazi regime is on its knees and Soviet troops are closing in. Without warning, the Nazis unleash the full might of their nuclear arsenal on their homeland and Eastern Europe. Stopping Wait, are you Soviet telling me the Nazis just turned into Belka? Europe into an uninhabitable nuclear wasteland. To the rest of the is this world, just Ace Combat Zero now? Final act of desperation by one of the cruelest. Because the Belkins were already sort of based on the Germans in World War II. Of the secrets that have been hidden deep underground. The Ark Project. I was gonna say it's interesting how, for all history, they they aren't going for like oh the, has been to this this group hidden. won the war instead. So instead, it's more the war went longer. But I think that's cooler. Meant to shelter and see, see how the different war strategies might go with newer technology and stuff. And rule the post-nuclear landscape, but not everything goes according to plan. For reasons unknown, one of the bunkers but instead, located just, just outside Kraków, Poland. Goes dark. Germans just pull off a stage of the apocalypse. Now, as you discover the past, you can shape the present. It's been 20 years since the explosion that set our story in motion. You play as Shimon, a 12 year old Polish boy driven by personal tragedy to seek out the bunker on the edge of Kraków. Yeah, this looks cool. At first, the place seems completely desolate. What brought Shimon to the bunker? What answers is he seeking? What? I, I can't hear you yourself. over the ambience. So, Paradise Lost. Do you dare it's another the name to keep in the back of my head. I got metal towards the end there for a second. Paradise Lost is coming to PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X. Our next game... Wait a second. Emily, have you crossed another thing off my script? Hey, we discussed this. You can't be trusted. Unbelievable. Okay, fine. Just roll the tape. World premiere. Okay. Operation Tango, this sounds familiar. Why does this sound familiar? Or choose hacker. Oh, this looks cool. It takes two to complete the mission. Oh I Oh, I'm all for this already. It takes two. Wasn't there another game that sort of had a similar present, a similar uh, premise where one of you was an infiltrator while the other was like your 
a hacker backup. Operation Tango. It takes which by way, to save the world. Which by the way, this is just asking for a Metal Gear skin where the agent is Snake and the hacker is Otacon. Our next game like, is I'm so not secret. the only one thinking we that, right? I don't even know its name at the time of this recording. So I'm just going to put myself out there and make one up. I'm guessing oh, this it's is called... Tana. The Kingdom of the Gusty Willows. This is that. This what is that one game that was from the Sony thing. Fake name is that? It is not called the Kingdom of Gusty Willows. Here's the developers of the Kingdom of the Gusty Willows to talk about their. I mean, that's not a bad name, Nolan. No that'd, that'd be fine for another game. The Kingdom of the Gusty Willows. Can I make it extremely clear? This is not called the Kingdom of the Gusty Willows. What's the big deal? It's a good title. It's not wrong. You just name something else Exclusive. that. Exclusive. Yeah, this is that, yeah. A lot of the same shots ever at the Sony thing, so I'm wondering if they're gonna the show new stuff. Kingdom of the Gusty Willows. It's actually called Kana Bridge of Spirits. Kana, that's how you say it. Hi, I'm Mike Greer. I'm the Chief Creative Officer at Ember Lab. And I'm Josh Greer, uh, Mike's brother. I'm the Chief Operating Officer here at the studio. You may have seen our game, Kena Bridge of Spirits, at the Sony PlayStation 5 event. And How today, you know? we're really excited to share a little bit more about the project. spying on me. So, what's this game all about? Well, Kena Bridge of Spirits is a story-driven action-adventure game that combines fast-paced combat with exploration and a really fun, charming companion mechanic where players are going around collecting forest creatures that we call the Rot. So, you play as Kena. She's a spirit guide who has traveled to this forgotten village. I really like the art style. And soon this discovers game. that there are many this looks nice. spirits. Um, and it becomes clear that there are larger forces at play that have sort of corrupted the environment and stopped things from moving on. Well, the main focus of the there. game actually revolves around helping these trapped spirits. So each kind of level or world that you enter is all focused and kind of themed around the corrupt spirit that's lingering. And to really help these spirits, you ultimately have to get to know Damn, those things are adorable. Past life. And to do so, you're... No, I don't want to shoot them, though. You know, facing combat challenges, solving puzzles, but ultimately, it all relies... Wait, shit, I just realized, does this mean they control the island of bug yeah, snacks are, here? ...are key to, like, sort of every aspect of gameplay. They can be used in combat, to augment abilities, they can be used to manipulate the environment, to carry things around for you. The more rot you have, the stronger you're going to be as a player and the more ability, abilities you get to unlock. The trailer does a lot of things, but one thing we wanted to do was make sure we established the tone and sort of darker elements that are in the game. And, um, you know, people see the rot and the cute characters and they immediately fall in love with them, which is great. But the opening cinematic with the meditation and kind of kind of battling these spirits we wanted to, to use to kind of set that darker tone and, and establish these, you know, that the player is going to be you know, ex exposes some darker themes in the storytelling. Oh God, I am I am so much more on edge now that that possibility is open to me. PlayStation 4 and the Epic Game Store. We're really excited for everyone to get their hands on the game, and in the meantime, enjoy the rest of the show. Yeah, this this game still looks cool. But now my heart is just filled with worry. Well, I think that's it. Thanks so much for watching the Future Games Show. And okay. Look out for more no bug snacks, thank God. Coverage on GamesRadar.com throughout this week and beyond. And don't forget to check out our sister shows from the Gorilla Collective over the next few days right here on Twitch. Wait, wait. Come on. Come on, Nolan. It wouldn't be a game show without that, you know. We got one more thing. Nope. Can we do the one more thing moment? You are so right. All right I, thought, I did think it was a little weird for them to leave off on the thing oh. that was already shown. But hey, Em, would you work with me again? Maybe in some kind of swashbuckling adventure where I play a roguish, charming adventurer? Nah, I think I, you know, I've been there. I've done that. World premiere. Three years ago, Serial Cleaner took you back to 1970s America in a single-player stealth action crime story where you played as a professional crime scene cleaner, getting rid of bodies and the incriminating evidence. I don't remember this. avoiding the police. Now, with over one million owners and releases on all major platforms, we're going to the 90s. I doubt it'd be Swollen Bones. I, I feel like that'd be sort of thing it would be soft to want to show one of their thing. Do they have a thing coming up at the Summer Game Fest?
I miss mom. That kind of looks like Dutch from Red Dead. Where is it would be soft will show anything off? What other show would they show it off at? Okay. Alright, this is Well, that really does complete our showcase for 2020. Yeah, we hope that... you've had a great time watching. Rex, right, no, he didn't say the game was gonna be squash looking, he was making an uncharted joke. I also just joke. wanna take a moment to thank our partners for helping put all like, of this together. You, no, 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 our voice is Nathan Drake, it, and that's I'll Elena's North, voice actress, right? And I'm Emily Rose. And this has been, Emily, if you will, the Future Game, game Show 2020. 2020. Not only are you sad, you are also stupid. But it's okay, I'll still be friends with ya. Cause that makes two of us now. Alright. That was a much better show than the PC gaming show. The fuck is that thing? I'm a loser yellow. Okay. Alright, so I... Yeah, plenty of cool stuff to look forward to there. Then I'm gonna look back at it to see if... Try to remember some stuff I didn't quite remember. But let's see if there's some stuff here. If, uh, yeah, let, me, let me see if there's stuff in this rundown that, that will remind me of some stuff I might have forgotten. Oh yeah, there's that adventure game. That looked cool. Tarkov looks cool. Avengers still looks weird. So is this like a wrap up for the week? Because a lot of these weren't shown at this show. Or any of the other ones today. That doesn't narrow things down, Rex. Oh, rip that person. Alright then. Well, the stream, I'm probably going to keep going. I'm probably going to start Hitman back up. But for the uh, for the uh, people watching this video on YouTube, that's going to be it. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Might, might try to figure out some more of this. Hey, uh, hey, uh, uh, Summer Game Fest stuff to stream. Don't know what I'll do, but... I'll, I'll probably announce this stuff on Twitter like I always do once I figure some out. But until then, bye-bye.